Hello everyone, welcome to this video based on how to tackle exam questions. These questions are only based on carbohydrates, which is part of the biological molecules topic area of AS biology. The questions are taken from past exams set by the AQA board. However, you will probably find a lot of overlap between the different boards. There are six questions I'm looking at in this video. The questions are in black and the answers are taken from the mark scheme in red. So let's get going, shall we? Question number one starts off nice and easy. The question is about glucose being a monosaccharide and how two molecules of glucose form a disaccharide. The first part of the question is worth two marks, where you have to name the products of this reaction. The diagram here is not part of the question on the exam. I've simply added it to ensure that you recall what a maltose molecule looks like. Please remember that the question is asking you about two glucose molecules joining together. So immediately in your head, you should know that they're asking about maltose. So the first question says, name the products of this reaction. And for two marks, you need to name two products. We know that two alpha molecules of glucose will make maltose. So one of the products has to be maltose. We also know this to be a reaction that releases one water molecule, so therefore water has to be the second product. Note that they do accept H2O as an answer. The next part of the question expects you to be able to name the reaction that joins those molecules of glucose together. And we all know that it's a condensation reaction that takes place. Nice and easy so far, right? Question number two. 2A is asking for the definition of a monomer. This is something that I've covered in my monomers and polymers video. The definition being a smaller repeating unit from which larger molecules are made. This would give you the two marks. Please note that they will reject answers that state the monomer is a building block. Again, this is something that I covered in my previous videos. For question 2B, there's a bit of a blurb about lactulose, and it asks you to state the similarity and the difference between lactulose and lactose for two marks. Here, we have to think back to our disaccharides and the monosaccharides that make them. The paragraph here states that lactulose is a disaccharide made up of galactose and fructose. And you should know from your learning that lactose is made up of glucose and galactose. Your similarity, therefore, is that both of them contain galactose. You can also say that both of them contain glycosidic bonds, and that would get also get you a marking point. In terms of the difference, well, if we know what mono monosaccharides make both of them up, we also know how they're different. So the difference is that lactulose contains fructose, whereas lactose contains glucose. Note that you have to state the difference, not just imply it. For example, if you'd said lactulose contains fructose, full stop, and did not develop it further by telling the examiner what lactose contained, you would miss out on this second marking point. Question number three. This particular one gives you a diagram of a starch and cellulose molecule and is and part A is asking for the difference in the structure of the two of them. This answer holds two marks, so we have to name two differences. From your knowledge, you should recall that starch is made up of alpha glucose only, but cellulose is made up of beta glucose. This is the first marking point. The second point will be awarded for saying that in cellulose, we get this inversion of the position of the carbon one atom. If you've watched my video on polysaccharides, I talk about the swiveling of the second beta molecule in the cellulose. That is, that is what this point is effectively referring to. Note that whenever you're explaining the difference between two things, you must state how both of them are different. So in this answer, you would state that starch is made up of alpha and cellulose is made up from beta glucose. If you did not say what cellulose is made up of, you wouldn't get the full mark. 3b asks about one way in which starch molecules are adapted for their function. This is holding two marks. This question is effectively asking for two pieces of information, one in terms of structure and one in terms of function. So you have to state two things related to each other to get the full two marks. The first thing you could say is the starch is insoluble and in turn talk about how this does not affect water potential. A possible second answer is to say that starch is in a helical shape and that makes it compact. And another alternate answer is to say that starch is a large molecule and so it cannot leave the cell. If you do not understand any of these points, please go back and watch my video on polysaccharides. The link is in the description of this video and just make sure that you learn it again. 3C looks at a similar question as before, but this time it's about cellulose. This question is worth three marks, so we know we have to mention at least three points. 
The first point I would make is that cellulose has long straight chains. I would then talk about how these chains become linked together by hydrogen bonds and how that then provides strength in particular to the cell wall. Anything that's in brackets in the mark scheme means that you do not have to mention it, but as you're writing your answers in full sentences, it probably would make sense to talk about the, the information that is in the brackets. I think the key thing here is to make sure that whilst you're writing in full sentences, you have to allow your thoughts to flow well enough to be able to articulate your answer clearly. Waffling in the exam will only waste your time, so be careful about this. So now we've come to question four. This is an extended response question. It's worth five marks, and this would normally be found towards the end of the paper. It is essentially asking you to talk about both starch and cellulose and relate their structure to their function. The previous couple of questions have covered this already, but I think it is really worth understanding the links between the structure and the function and how to answer these questions. I also want to talk you through the use of the word so. The command here is describe. Therefore, you have to say what the structure is and then say how it's related to the function of it. I would highly recommend you use the word so to link these points together. Let me show you what I mean. The first marking point are for starch, and you can see cellulose on the right there. So we'll come on to that in a second. But let's just look at the box on the left where it says starch max three. The first point under the starch describes starch as being helical and so it is compact. So you can see how the word so can come into your answer as you're writing it down. This here would give you one mark as you related the two remarks together. The second point could be awarded if you said it's a large molecule, so does not affect the water potential. Again, the word so relates the two remarks together. Some of you might think to say starch is branched, so glucose can be easily released. And the last point is to say it is large, so it cannot leave the cell. So this is a full relation of structure to function of the starch. Please note that the max three in this box means that you can only get a maximum of three marks, even if you mention all of those points, because the question is about starch and cellulose. So I would probably say that you should mention three of the points from starch and two to three of the points from cellulose to get the full five marks. Moving on to cellulose, we would say quite a bit about its structure. Long chains, unbranched with many microfibrils, and the so part comes in towards the end when we talk about its strength as a structural component of cells. I hope that helps you understand how to answer this question. And as I said earlier, it is worth noting that if you've mentioned all of the points for just one of them, you will never get the maximum marks for this question. You have to mention both of the polysaccharides in order to get the full five marks. Question number five shows you a diagram of a cellulose molecule. We're told it's cellulose, uh, but if you imagine for one second, if you had to identify this molecule, you would note the position of the glycosidic bonds alternating between up and down. That's how we know it's cellulose. Anyway, this question is not overly challenging, to be honest. The first part wants you to name the monomers that form the cellulose molecule. And so that's nice and easy. Anything to do with beta or beta glucose. Note that here it says accept small b or capital B and reject any reference to alpha. If you forget what the beta symbol looks like and you just put a b, they will give you the mark. The next part of the question asks you to name the bond in position Y. The answer is pretty simple. We've talked about the glycosidic bonds a number of times. Please note that if you wrote down glycosidic by itself, you'd get the one mark, but they do give you marks for saying if it's a beta one four link. Please make sure you write down beta and not alpha. It's beta because that's what cellulose molecules are made out of. And then the last part of the question is looking at the chemical group and position Z. If we look at the diagram and we find where position Z is on the left hand side at the bottom, you have an H opposite it. So that means that position Z must be an OH group or a hydroxyl group. We also know that when we draw the beta molecule, the first OH group is always in the down position. So that should also give you a clue about how to answer this question. This particular question over here for 5b I think is a really good one as part of a revision resource. Perhaps you want to pause the video when I show you the answers so that you can make some revision notes in the form of a table. 
The question itself asks for two ways in which starch is different from cellulose. There are so many points you could say about both of them. You could talk about the isomers of glucose that they're made up of, the bonding, the branching versus no branching. So here are the possible answers that you could give. So for starch, you could talk about the 1,4 and the 1,6 bonds. You could talk about the branching. You could talk about the glucose monomers being all the same way up. You could talk about the helix or the coiled shape and the fact that starch is made up of alpha glucose. You could even say that starch has no microfibrils. Conversely, when we compare that to cellulose, well, we know cellulose has 1,4 bonds only, and that forms a straight chain. You could talk about the alternate glucose monomers being upside down, and you could say that they're made up of beta molecules of glucose. And then lastly, you could talk about the fact that cellulose has microfibrils. So I think this is quite an easy one to answer, but I also think that this table itself is a really good revision resource for you guys to um, copy out and make notes on. So the last question here I have is on glycogen. You may have noticed there are a lot of questions on starch and cellulose and not too much focus on glycogen. So this one will be really useful to know about. The question in the beginning gives us a bit of a blurb about glycogen in mammals and the uterus during pregnancy. The first part asks us to describe the structure of glycogen. Nice and easy. I think we can say it's made up of alpha glucose held together by glycosidic bonds and it's got a branch structure. Any two of these would give you the two marks that you need to attain for this particular question. The second part of it asks us to suggest how glycogen acts as a source of energy. This is a question about, about applying some of your knowledge that you've gained from any of your lessons. We know that energy is held in the form of glucose molecules and when the bond is hydrolyzed all well, the glucose is released. So we can say that the hydrolysis of the bonds to release glucose helps to contribute towards this energy. It is two marks though. We know glucose itself isn't a form of energy. We know that ATP is our energy currency and you already know that from your GCSEs even though we've not necessarily talked about it as part of the theory. So for this particular question you should say that the bonds are hydrolyzed releasing glucose and that glucose can be used in respiration. And those two are the points that they expect you to say in order to achieve the two marks. I would also like to make an important note at this point that a lot of students end up saying broken down instead of hydrolyzed. That's not allowed. You have to say hydrolyzed. Broken down does not mean the same as hydrolyzed. So you would not get the first marking point if you said broken down. The second point, um, they don't allow you to say energy produced. You just have to talk about the fact that glucose is used in respiration because by hydrolysis, we're not producing ATP. So that's a really important one to, to kind of note. So I think that's it, guys. Um, I hope looking at some typical exam questions was useful. If there are any questions that you've got or areas that you didn't understand, please go back to the videos on my channel or follow the links in the description underneath this video to fill in those gaps in your knowledge. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe and leave any comments below this video. So bye for now.